Well, hi there. I am here today with my male Pictus gecko. And I actually just got a group of four Pictus geckos when I went to the Tinley Park Reptile Expo. I was not planning to buy anything there because I'd have to ship it home, but I have been looking for Pictus geckos for a long time because they're awesome and I really want to show them to you. The truth is that the Pictus gecko is, in my opinion, one of the very best pet lizards for beginners, but also even for intermediate advanced keepers because they're just really, really neat. The only reason they weren't on our original list, the top five reptiles for beginners, is just because um, they can be a little bit difficult to find. They, they used to not be so uncommon, but man, all of a sudden they have become, at least here in the United States, fairly difficult to come across. I mean, you know, I, I was looking for Pictus geckos for over a year, and even at Tinley, where I did eventually find my Pictus gecko, I mean, I saw more Australian leaf-tailed geckos for sale than Pictus geckos. So they've suddenly become rare, and I really don't know why. They are, however, amazing. I mean, this right here is a good-sized adult male. The females are even smaller than this. They have beautiful, really just glorious little patterns. They've got these enormous heads. In fact, Big-Headed Gecko is one of the names from them. They've got many, many, many nicknames. But Big-Headed Gecko makes a lot of sense because even for geckos, which have like big eyes and relatively big heads, these guys have an extra big noggin, especially on males like this guy. There's a little bit of sexual dimorphism. Females are a little bit smaller. They come in a number of different color morphs. Uh, I've got four that are all the wild type coloration, but you can see there's even pretty great variation between those. And, and then on top of that, you've got striped morphs, and, and this is the, the not striped morph. Uh, and I don't know even what all the morphs are that are out there that you could possibly get, but there's a lot of variation in Pictus geckos, which is really fun. I, I've learned a few crazy things about them. One thing is they're very prolific breeders. I, I got a breeding group, and the reason I brought the male today and I didn't bring the three females is because two of the females are working on eggs, and the other female just laid some eggs. And the eggs they lay have hard shells, which that's very unusual for a lizard. And unfortunately, I actually cracked one of the first ones that I got, which was very disappointing to me, not to the Aki, but it was very disappointing to me that I cracked one of their eggs. Uh, the other one, though, is incubating quite nicely, and I will be a lot more careful with them. You just need to be more gentle with those hard-shelled eggs than I am with, say, leopard gecko eggs or crested gecko eggs, which are leathery and, and soft and a lot more durable. They're almost like tiny little ping pong balls because they're spherical too, it's crazy. I just love these guys and I've heard a rumor, though I have not been able to substantiate it well and I don't know of a good experimental protocol for to test this, but that their skin is hydrophobic and water will just beat up on it and actually, at least when they're young, they can just sit on the surface of water like oil. That's pretty wild. These are no doubt awesome, awesome little lizards. But the big question is, is the Pictus gecko the best pet lizard for you? To help you sort this out, we've scored the Pictus gecko based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Pictus gecko a score of four out of five. There are a couple of problems with handling Pictus geckos. First of all, being that they're small. Um, which will be a pro in many ways, but it also means that they could be relatively easily injured by any sort of rough handling. The other thing is, at times, and we might see this today, they can be a little bit prone to scurrying off, especially if they're not used to handling. The group that I got, uh, they're definitely not used to being handled, and uh, that's why a lot of today I'm gonna let this male just sit here on the table. And, and when they're not used to being handled, they're not gonna do crazy things, they're not gonna bite you or scratch you or anything like that. It's just, they're gonna be a little more inclined to scurry off and maybe to jump off of your hands when handling them. And so that makes it a little bit harder. But if you get a baby and raise it up and handle it regularly, they tend to be pretty excellent. A lot like leopard geckos, which are really great to handle. They certainly aren't gonna hurt you. 
they're they're not inclined to bite, and their bite is nothing to worry about, even if you do get bitten, despite the big head. Still a little gecko. Their claws... Uh, you'll be hard-pressed to even ever feel those claws. They can drop their tail, and you know that I hate that. But one thing that's really cool about these guys that's a little different from most other geckos is they tend to grow back a pretty rockin' replacement tail. It, it tends to look very, very much like the original tail, and that is not the case for leopard geckos, which grow back this kind of smooth, bulbous replacement tail. Uh, crested geckos don't even grow their tail back at all, and so it's pretty cool. If they're gonna lose their tail, which I hate, that you can just wait and it'll be back essentially like it was before. They just kind of rock for handling, uh, you know, except for being small. And so just be careful with them and be careful not to overdo it because you can stress these geckos if you just handle them constantly. But they do great. When it comes to care, we give the Pictus gecko a score of four out of five. The enclosure that you'll need for Pictus geckos, even a breeding group, is very reasonable and affordable to get. You don't even need it to have a great lid. I mean, I've been honestly debating whether or not I even need to use the lid on my enclosure. And to be perfectly honest, I mean, the main reason I'm leaving it on there is because sometimes while I'm dealing with other animals, I'll set something on top of the enclosure and I don't want to accidentally drop it inside. They do have what look almost like toe pads. So I would definitely recommend using some sort of a lid because maybe they could climb glass, but I've never seen them do anything even close. So just to be on the safe side, use a lid, but it doesn't have to be like a sliding lid or something like that. Any sort of a lid that covers the top will do. They're very easy to breed. Uh, almost too easy to breed. Uh, like I said, I mean, I just got these guys. I've already got three females laying eggs. Uh, it is very possible to overdo it with these guys. So you're definitely going to want to separate the male from your females for a few months each year just so the females don't breed themselves to death. And if you do intend to breed them, make sure you know what you're going to do with the babies once you have them because you'll probably have some. I already have eggs, and as I already mentioned, they're hard-shelled and brittle, so be aware of that when you're handling the eggs, when you move them to the incubator, but after that, there are no worries, they're probably gonna hatch for you just fine. They're awesome. There are lots of substrate options that can work for them. I mean, you can use things as simple as newspaper. I'm using a mixture that involves shredded coconut fiber, uh, like EcoEarth, which is great, and it maintains a little bit of humidity. I live in a dry climate, and these guys do require some humidity, so a substrate like that is a great idea, and you can go full bioactive with it, which is awesome. These guys are awesome. I would recommend that you avoid sand. You know, you can still have a number of problems with sand with a lot of animals. You know, I'd worry some about the shedding on their toes, and if they ingest that sand, that can be a bad deal as well. When it comes to feeding, they're gonna eat insects, and they've got big heads, so they can actually handle some reasonably sized insects for such a small gecko. Uh, make sure that you're frequently dusting those with calcium, especially, and other vitamin supplements. But uh, these guys go through a lot of calcium, especially the females, because they're laying all those eggs. So make sure they have access to calcium all the time on their food, and maybe just a little dish from whence they can lap up some calcium. They'll do that, so will leopard geckos. I already mentioned that humidity is important. Uh, you can help maintain that humidity by misting them regularly, and also uh, make sure that you have a water bowl in there. They will drink from a water bowl, as will leopard geckos. And, and so make sure they have a lot of access to water. I would also recommend putting a humid hide in the enclosure, which can be as simple as like a uh, butter dish with a little hole cut in it full of some sphagnum moss or damp paper towels. That, that stays humid. This is the kind of thing you would actually use for a ball python around shedding time as well. Humid hides, both on the warm side and the cool side of the enclosure, are gonna be great for these guys. And as far as maintaining that warm side, I would recommend an under tank heat mat on a thermostat, just to make sure it doesn't overheat. That's gonna be an easy and safe way that you can provide the heat they're gonna need. Uh, you can also use light bulbs, but those are going to be a problem at night and you're going to need to turn them off and then they won't have heat. And so I would recommend just going with the heat mat and using light, maybe just ambient light in the room, just so that they have a normal photo period. They don't need any sort of ultraviolet light. This is a gecko that's going to be hidden during the day, uh, buried underground perhaps or under a rock. And so they don't really benefit from ultraviolet light, which is awesome. Frankly, you know, except for their humidity requirements, uh, this is about as easy of a reptile pet as you could possibly get. 
When it comes to hardiness, we give the Pictus Gecko a score of five out of five. That is assuming that you maintain the proper levels of humidity and that you don't breed the females to death. Make sure that they have good access to calcium. Simple things, don't freeze them to death, don't cook them, don't smash them. But, you know, given proper care and assuming you avoid these sorts of accidents, they should do really great for you. And they breed like monsters. So if you've got a male and one or more females, you're gonna have babies. Once again, I'd just like to thank our patrons at Patreon for sending me to Tinley. I mean, I've wanted to go like for decades, but it's never been realistic for me to be able to get there. And, and you guys made it possible for me to be there and to find these incredible Pictus geckos. So thank you guys so much. And uh, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. When it comes to availability, we give the Pictus gecko a score of two out of five. Now, uh, frankly, not long ago, I would have given them a much higher score for availability. Maybe where you live, they're more common, but they have virtually vanished. I've been looking for them for over a year, and I finally found them at Tinley, and there were still only like three booths that were selling them, and the prices were much higher than in the past. I don't know why they've disappeared, but they have suddenly disappeared. Like I said before, I saw more Australian leaf-tailed geckos at, at Tinley than I saw Pictus geckos, and I was looking for Pictus geckos. But, you know, you can find them online. I, you know, I think of these as normally being like a $35 gecko, and so I wasn't too inclined to spend $50 in shipping on a $35 gecko to buy them online, but they have been there all along. Some expos, though I've been looking at expos for a year, and I had to go to Tinley, maybe the best expo in the United States to find them, so not a lot of expos. Uh, certainly seem to be rare at pet shops right now. Uh, like I said, this could change, and you know, depending on where you live, maybe they're everywhere. But uh, from my perspective, pretty hard to find at the moment. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Pictus Gecko a score of four out of five. The geckos suddenly are not that cheap. I'm seeing them more like $80 a piece, maybe 200 for a pair. So uh, prices seem to be up on Pictus Geckos, which makes sense because they're as rad as ever and suddenly rare. Again, that might change. I mean, they're easy to breed, so if people start breeding them, the price could go way down. After that though, I mean, reptiles, they just don't get much cheaper. Uh, the enclosure that you need, about as cheap as a reptile enclosure is gonna get, other than like the morning geckos. Uh, you know, substrate, you have lots of options. Some of it's almost free, but you know, even the better options are cheap. Uh, you're gonna need some humid hides, which again, might be an old, like butter dish. You need a water bowl, a spray bottle, heat mat and thermostat, that'll be the most expensive part, uh, some calcium powder, and bam, you're done. And, and we'll have links to all these things down in the description. Overall, we give the Pictus Gecko a score of 3.8 out of 5. The, but the truth is, you know, other than suddenly being a little bit difficult to find, these guys are just absolutely incredible. They're a great choice for a beginner, but they're also unusual and fun enough for a more advanced keeper, really any keeper. They're really a perfectly reasonable lizard for anybody who doesn't mind feeding insects to a lizard and who likes looking at really cool heads. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. They can drop this tail, so I don't want to push him to the limit. Say me, I'm to the limit. Everybody come on for Hogwarts. Really pretty adorable. Nice jump, buddy.